1965 Impala Restoration, Part 5. Hey, that merchandise store is now open. If we're bringing you good content and you like the channel, help support us. Make a purchase. All right, let's get into it. Back from the Media Blast. Nice, hot Texas sunny day. And we're going to make a stop over at the PPG store. And we're a exclusive PPG shop. And we're going to be applying DP90 epoxy primer. And here it is. Now it's going to take about a gallon and a quart to a gallon and a half to completely cover this car if we're efficient. First, we're going to check out these fender skirts. Pretty excited about this. Now these are kind of new reproductions and we're going to check them out. Looks like they've got pretty nice lines. Now we've got new quarter panels we're going to be installing on this car. Hopefully they'll all match up real nice. Now it only comes with the fender skirts, no other hardware. Looking pretty good. And here's the lock unlock mechanism. And if we're going to be handling any surfaces that have been media blasted, you must wear some type of glove. Latex gloves work the best for us. And there it is. And we're going to be doing this step about four or five times to get all of the media out. It's really important. You don't want to be applying your epoxy and... Uh, run into a patch of media or sand that blows all over everything yeah not fun now this is one of the best blowers i've ever seen or used if you don't have one get it and yeah we're going to be rotating this thing, like I said, several times. Each time it'll be about like this or a little bit less until it's all gone. And we'll get it all vacuumed, put it in multiple different positions, vacuum out that position, turn it, keep going until it's gone. Okay, sometimes people ask what media is used. Now, this is green diamond media. It's a 30-50 mix, and that works really well for uh, auto body use. Now, this is the quarter panel that we're going to be replacing, and you can see why. And there's collision damage also. Now, this is also important. Now, they used to use brass a lot. Brass will always crack on a stress joint. And the media blasting revealed some uh, some more rusted out areas. And a lot of times people will ask, you know, how much right up front for a restoration or work to be done. And you really can't give an accurate estimate until the vehicle's been media blasted. It's like most of this was not even visible when I first looked at the car. Now, I did this myself. I covered this up and gave a wide area. So the media blaster couldn't even get close to this Ventag because we do not want that to be damaged. So I'm going to finish that off myself. You need to get that thing covered up and taped up. Now this is uh, 80 grit on a little mini DA. And you will just work progressively closer to the edge of the Ventag. 
and we've pulled it off and now we're taping it back up so we can get our epoxy primer on and not get any primer or overspray on the Vintag. Now this is another area when you're doing a restoration. Lead was also used in the joints. And you can see the different color than the steel here come through. Now this is going to be lead and we always want to remove that. And I can already tell there's issues with the application of this lead and you can see a crack there. So we're going to get this lead off and we're just going to use a map gas because lead melts around I think it's 327 somewhere around there real low melting point so it'll come out of there real easy and we don't ever want to camp out on the metal and uh, yeah it's not a good situation and with that lead melting off you can see how really ugly it looks underneath yeah there were some issues with uh, whoever installed this Maybe the metal wasn't clean or, yeah, something. And you can see a big hole that wasn't there before. And water or moisture will get behind lead also. So it always has to be removed for a, a good quality restoration. Okay, and all of the seams, we're going to go back with a wire wheel and just hit all of the seams make sure there's no residue left from uh, caulking anything like that we want to get the epoxy in there really nicely and here's another often overlooked area the drip rail there is caulking in that joint also and we like to get that out get it really nice and clean and a little bit of residue just here and there from uh, from the media blaster. Now this is uh, going to be like a body sealant, something like that. That was around the hinges. Want to get all of that off? Don't want a primer over that, epoxy primer over that. Run over it with the wire wheel. Make sure it's all gone. If there's any residue come back with some acetone something like that wipe it off it's always the little steps it's always the little details that really shine through on the finished product now we're just wiping it off with the scotch bright or should say scrubbing it off okay for reveal damage now we're looking at the floor pan and you'll notice that it's not only the floor pan that's affected there are braces underneath also and that also goes into when people ask or ask for a quote or an estimate with rust repair it's usually never just one panel that's damaged the panels uh, attached to braces or overlap other panels there's always adjoining rust issues or damage. And passenger side. Now this quarter panel doesn't have collision damage, but the pretty much the entire length of the bottom is damaged by rust. Now this is a shot of the trunk area. Now I already know that we're going to be replacing this entire upper and lower trunk and trunk drops yeah it's pretty extensive and now under this this would be where the body mount area is or the mount completely gone okay let's get this thing uh, primed and like I mentioned this is DP90 PPG epoxy primer and over bare steel, you want to use either something with zinc or an epoxy. Urethane primers, any other type of primers, that's that's a no-no. And here it is primed. And you can see some of the rust damage that has been revealed. 
through media blasting? And after Media Blast, you always want to be very, very thorough with the top coat because we do not want any rust starting. It's, it's really time consuming and uh, the rotisserie really helps a lot to be able to rotate it into multiple different positions so we can get really, really good, adequate coverage. Really nice top other than those few uh, rust holes. And w the panels that we're going to be replacing, well, we're not going to waste material. So we did not prime those. Now the floor, that's up to the customer. I have to speak with him to see if we're going to be replacing that or not. Okay. We're going to get all of the rest of the parts there they are hung up and we'll see what damages they have it's pretty much average lower part of the uh, fenders that one's a little bit more than the uh, passenger side And it's affecting the outer skin of the of the uh, fender and the braces, inner braces, brackets. This is another important uh, thing you want to keep in mind. Now this comes from touching the bare steel or media blasted steel. Maybe my arm touched it or some somehow it came into contact, and it starts oxidizing. So we want to address that. We do not want to go over that with the epoxy primer. Just go through the steps. Make sure it's removed. And here's a little bit of residue of uh, body caulking sealant. When you're media blasting, you never want to camp out on one area too long. You'll run into issues. So, it's always just as easy to come back and uh, clean those areas up. And get them prepped. And we're good to go now. And there it is, the rest of the parts. DP90, inside and out. Really nice, good coverage inside the fenders. So want to be really thorough. And here are the rest of the parts that were media blasted. Hey, and don't hit, forget to hit that like and subscribe. Check out the merchandise store. As always, thanks for watching.